Hello, this is Pastor A.R. Bernard from the Christian Cultural Center in New York City, the United States of America. It is a strange thing to be speaking to those of you who have gathered today for this special event. Leaders from across the country and other countries as well. And strange because I'm speaking into my own country that I have not had the opportunity to return to for a long time. I couldn't be there with you today, but I could be with you in the form of this video. We are already making plans for next year when I can spend a week with you, but for now, we will take it virtually. I want to thank my dear friend and brother, Jose Duran, for uh, making this possible and having an opportunity to share with you. Thank you for receiving my son, Pastor Jamal Bernard. He's excited about getting to his dad's country before his dad could get there. Today, I just want to share some thoughts with you in the brief time that we have available. Theology takes place in the marketplace, not through the theologian, but through the layperson. And those of you who are in the marketplace at various levels of life and experience and in certain institutions and institutional contexts, you're the ones that really bring the kingdom of God and Christ to the culture. So I want to speak to you in that vein, Christ and culture. All countries and cultures have three basic systems. They have the economy, which is essentially the economic system, which is about the creation and distribution of wealth. Then there is the political system, the state, government, which is about the legitimization and distribution of power. In the political system, power becomes legal. Thirdly, there is the moral system, which is the voice of conscience within the soul of the society that fights for the common good and creates boundaries for the pursuit of self-interest, also known as natural law and divine law. In America, we call this the word and will of God. And if there's any one thing that religion brings to society, it's a moral value consensus, which is necessary for justice and concord. When Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, he was sending us into the culture, the culture which is made up of certain elements, but really a reflection of the characteristics of a society. How does it work on the ground? Well, when we seek to influence people, we can pay them to do so. That is economics. We can force them to do so. That's politics. Or we can persuade them by a set of higher values, virtues, responsibilities, and constraints. That is morality. And that is the moral value consensus that we who subscribe to faith bring to the culture. Let's, let's talk a little bit about culture. Culture is what people believe, how they behave, and the outcomes they produce. Culture is the character and personality of a society the totality of its traditions, which is what they believe and pass on from generation to generation. It is their attitudes, essentially their intellectual and emotional disposition and desires. Culture is the customs of that society, what they actually put into practice as a people. Culture is its social institutions, the systems and structures that perpetuate the culture, that perpetuate and preserve those beliefs, those attitudes, whether it's in education, finance, arts, entertainment, government, 
whatever those social t- institutions may be, they essentially, essentially perpetuate the culture. And also in its language. And I don't mean Spanish and English, but the, the words, the verbalizing of those beliefs, of those attitudes, the verbalizing of those practices and dispositions, be they intellectual or be they emotional. That essentially is culture. So when Jesus said, go ye into all the world, the word world there is the word cosmos. He was talking about taking the kingdom of God to the culture, wherever it may be, whether it's in the Western Hemisphere, Northern, Southern, Eastern Hemisphere, Asia, Africa, Europe, South America, Central America, the United States, whatever that cultural context may be, the kingdom of God was dispatched through Jesus Christ to bring God's love, life, and light, God's order to the chaos of society. It begs the question now, what is the kingdom of God? Jesus said, picking up from John the Baptist, repent for the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is at hand. Interesting word, repent, the Greek word metanoia, which means a change of mind evidence by a change in actions. So what he was demanding from the people is that they change the way they think. Too often we think of repentance in its religious context or as a religious term, but that's not how Jesus used it. He said, in order to embrace God's way of doing and being, God's order, it would require a serious, profound, radical change in the way one thinks. And that change in thought should be evidenced by a change in behavior, conduct, or actions. The kingdom of God is not a place that we go to after death. No, Jesus prayed, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus was not praying for us to leave the planet and go to the kingdom, but he was teaching us to pray that the kingdom should come to the earth. He spoke this when they asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. And in that prayer, that very powerful prayer called the Lord's Prayer, his essential words were, after forgiveness, prayer, that the will of God, the way of God, the mind of God, the order of God come to human society. The kingdom of God is the will of God demonstrated in the earth. And it requires certain characteristics. In fact, if I were to use one word, very powerful word, I would say it requires audacity. It requires humility. The humility to say that maybe I don't know the best way to order society. Maybe God has a better idea since he created all of this. It requires empathy. The ability to walk in someone else's shoes, experience what they experience, and then speak into it from a kingdom perspective. It takes maturity, which does not come with age, but begins with the acceptance of responsibility for our words, thoughts, motives, actions, and our attitudes. It takes decisiveness. And decisiveness is the ability to make decisions quickly and confidently. And it requires a set of values and principles by which you live and all decisions are filtered through. It takes consistency, consistent application of those values and principles that you subscribe to. And it takes moral courage strength of convictions, not preferences, but convictions. 
And the difference between preferring to do something and having a conviction about something is simple. Preferences are negotiable. Preferences are changeable. Preferences weaken under pressure. But convictions, those things are unchangeable, non-negotiable, and strengthen under pressure. The kingdom of God is a conviction about the order of life and how to live in human society. The Bible gives us a narrative. It's a worldview, a narrative that informs our beliefs, our assumptions, and our choices. The kingdom of God is a righteous way of thinking, doing, and being that sets us apart from the rest of the world. And Jesus wanted us not only to speak it into the culture, into those customs and traditions and attitudes and institutions and language, but to live the Christian difference, model the kingdom of God as a way of thinking, doing, and being. The kingdom of God is spiritual. It is moral. It is political. It is economic. It's intellectual. And it is social. In the kingdom of God, power is an instrument to advance moral objectives like equity, justice, and the common good. It is a comprehensive way of seeing life that informs our words, thoughts, motives, actions, and attitudes. It is a worldview that guides every thought, every action, every relationship, our every ambition. It is a worldview that defines our identity as human beings, that defines our identity in a culture suffering from the breakdown of the family, identity dysphoria, and the erosion of moral values. It is essentially God's way of doing and being that we bring to our society. You, in no matter what capacity you may occupy, whether it's in the secular world or in the sacred world, whether it's in the marketplace or in the church, you have a responsibility to bring that way of thinking, doing, being, living. What opens the door to the kingdom? Faith. Faith and obedience are the keys that unlock the kingdom's power to heal broken human beings, broken men, broken women, broken marriages, broken homes, broken communities, a broken society, a broken nation, and a broken world. And once the power of the kingdom is released, it flows into every aspect of human existence, our hearts and minds changing the individual, our systems and structures changing the society, our traditions and customs, changing our beliefs and our practices, our intellectual and emotional dispositions, changing our attitudes. It gets into our social institutions and what they perpetuate. It gets into our language, changing us from fear to faith, from the negative to the positive. This is why Jesus said, pray, thy kingdom come. Theology takes place in the marketplace through the layperson, not the theologian. We empower you to take Christ into the culture. Let me encourage you. This is a wonderful time to be the ambassadors of Christ, bringing God's order, God's way of doing, being, and thinking to a world who is desperately in need of a better way they're desperately in need of God's love, life, and light. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for your ear today. And most importantly, thank you for your Christian witness. Before I leave you, I want to pray for you. Let's bow our heads as we go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for every individual in the sound of my voice. Thank you for their commitment to the kingdom of God. 
Thank you for their desire to learn and understand how to demonstrate that kingdom to the world and the culture in which they live. I pray that you will heighten their spiritual awareness and prophetic sensibilities. Anoint them afresh as new ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Open doors of favor, open doors of opportunity. Give them the language, the words, the mind necessary to bring God's love, life, and light to a world in need. Let them see themselves as agents of change in the culture in which you have placed them. I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And again, thank you for this opportunity to share with you.